everyone, I'm Becky. And I'm Sarah. And we're doing Bickering Book Reviews. Today we're talking about Things I'm Seeing Without You by Peter, we're going to say Bob Nanny. I apologize if that's not correct. And this book is about Tess Fowler, who's unable to deal with her life. She just dropped out of high school and moved to her father's house because she can't deal with what happened to her boyfriend. Jonah, who seems to understand Tess like no one else, committed suicide. Now Tess is trying to get through every day, and it may not be possible. But when Tess receives a message from Jonah's former roommate, Tess may discover a secret that will change everything she knew about her relationship with Jonah. Ooh. So I had a very mixed reaction to this book. I liked the general idea of it. First, though, we did get this book from... From NetGalley. Oh, well, I got it through Edelweiss, but we also had an ARC from... Um, oh, I didn't have an From ARC. BEA. Oh, I didn't... Yeah, I came in my prize pack for Bob. Oh, nice. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah. I, so, uh, so wait, we covered all platforms. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. But don't worry. We're sharing the love as far as the physical arc That's goes. true. We always do. I might keep it. Anyway. Um, but go ahead. Um, so, I was just, um, <laughs> so, yeah, I liked the general idea of this. Like, I liked the idea of her whole relationship being online and, like, trying to deal and move past it. I just did not like Tess. I didn't like her, but I, but I feel like that was because she was in a, like, she was having a rough time. I mean, she was, not only was she grieving, but she was also dealing with a few other kind of, like, personal problems, and, like, she really didn't have anybody that she could count on. So, like, I don't know if Tess ever really could have been a likable character. But I just, and I think my problem with it is it, the narration does not sound like a teenage girl to me. See, and I had a problem with the narration, too. However, I had a problem with the fact that she's described as being very depressed, but I don't, like, that doesn't come across for me. I, yeah, no, they, it's one of those they just keep telling you she's depressed. But it was, like, throughout the whole book, she would say things, and I'd be like, this is not what a 17-year-old girl talks like. They don't say these things. You know, and maybe I did pick up on that, because I kept thinking that she was in college. Right. Because she goes to a boarding school where she lives, so... To me, that just means college, but no, she was in high school. Right. So, and I think that it must have come across for me because I I kept having to tell myself, she's in high school, she's in high school, she's in high school. Right. Because it didn't fit. Like, so yeah, the voice was very, it was yeah. difficult. But I also think that the two major plot points, I think it felt very much like two separate books or like they kind of that. were like parallel storylines that really didn't cross because you've got her grief issue and then you've got this online kind of plot point and I don't feel like they really worked well together. Well, then you have the part with her father planning the unusual funerals and her helping, which is kind of like zany and funny, but it doesn't fit into a book about suicide and grieving. Right. It, I mean, it doesn't fit into a book about a, like a severely depressed character. But she wasn't messy. That's the psychology degree again. I don't. I don't think that it came off as she being clinically depressed. She wasn't. I mean, she didn't feel that way. Even she was supposed they to. They keep telling you that she was but... like she was supposed to appear suicidal, and I didn't even get like that from it. No. Um, but I think that if it was like just her father planning these funerals and the online kind of storyline, I feel like that would have been very interesting. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I thought, like, some of it was really, like, some of it was really interesting. Now, the publisher summary that I read, like, it sounded super boring, but, like, when I started reading it, I was like, oh, there's, like, way more to this book than what the summary describes. And I think they did that as a way to kind of not give anything else away. That's possible. Because, like, I mean, there was a twist, but first of all... It was a twist that came really early. And so, I thought it was really obvious, but... Well, um, but, okay. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know. I just, it's kind of hard, I think, when um, authors put the twist so early in a book because, like, then really, like, what do you say about the book without giving anything away? That's true. I mean, you know, they're allowed to do what they want to do, but I think it makes things, makes it difficult to have a conversation about the book. That's true. Um, I think that's, I mean, there really isn't much more there to say it. about it. I mean, it was, I read it, it was super okay. Fast. It was okay. It's No Memory of Light by Francisco X. Stork which is about a, you know, a girl who has depression. Um, but it, you know. It's it almost like it didn't know what it was going to be. Was it a book about depression? Was it a book about her dealing with her family? Was it a book about the boyfriend dying? Was it a book about the funerals? And it was like, it was almost like we just put too much stuff in there that it lost its identity. Right, but it didn't feel overly long, though. No, it was quick read. 
So he like he legitimately could have done it. It just didn't integrate well. Yeah. All right. So I think we we're ready to read, read, it. read it. We are ready to read. read. <laughs> um, so we use the classic unicorns to horse scale. Obviously. We, obviously. We start up with five unicorns. We go down to two unicorns. If we don't like it, it's a horse. Um, I'm going to give things I'm seeing without you. See, I'm wavering between a two and a three. I'm going to go with a three because I think that there is an audience for it. I gave it a three as well. I mean, I kind of, I enjoyed it, and I really, I really enjoyed her, like, the interactions with her father. I liked the whole funeral planning business. I, I mean, her voice was hard, but I, I liked it in general, so. That's where we are on Things I'm Seeing Without You. All right, so see you around. Bye.